Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen, and today I'm bringing you another edition of differences between the UK and America that you might not have realized. Now we will branch out from these types of videos at some point. Uh, someone did ask me what I would do when I ran out of differences, and let me tell you, that would take a long time. Um, but yes, we will be doing different topics, but you all love a good comparison video, especially when we talk about stuff like baloney and netball like we're about to. Okay, let's jump right into it. Difference number one, the length of weddings. So I thought about this because we were watching Father of the Bride the other day. Very good Steve Martin film if you haven't seen it. And they were getting ready for the wedding and it was basically not happening until like five o'clock, so they had the whole day to get ready. This is very true of most American weddings. Um, they typically would start around five or six in the evening and end maybe 10 or 11. Um, obviously, there are some nuances based on what part of the country you're in or family traditions or things like that, but like a four to five hour wedding is very standard in America. You would not find that weird or short. Um, you just, you get in, they get married, you have the meal, you eat the cake, you say thanks for coming and you leave. Americans were very like, want to get on to the next thing. Here in the UK, uh, weddings last like a solid 10 to 12 hours. Um, typically, the invitations we've gotten to weddings in the UK, they've started anywhere between like 12 and 2, usually more like the 2 p.m. zone. Um, and they also go until uh, like 11, 12, 1 in the morning. So genuinely, when you go to a UK wedding, like that is your entire day. Um, and in America, you could like have a whole work day before you go to a wedding, basically. So the differences in timings and lengths, lengths, of what we expect in a American versus a UK wedding are very different. I will say, this is controversial, um, despite the fact that my wedding was a little bit different because we did like America plus the UK in this like combination situation. Um, however, on the whole, if I'm attending, I am still an American, so I prefer the four to five hour mark because like I said, we're in, we're out, we do the wedding and then we leave. A UK wedding can be incredibly fun as a guest if you know a lot of people there, if you're part of like that inner friend group of the bride and groom, totally. Who wouldn't want to spend 12 hours with your best friends? However, if you attend as a plus one, to a British wedding when you don't really know that many people, 10 to 12 hours suddenly seems like a very long time. Okay, uh, next difference. Someone asked me about homecoming in the comments because they've heard American high schools have this thing called homecoming. And I'm gonna do a whole video about the absolute absurdity of American high schools. I will tell you what you think an American high school is based on the movies. 100% accurate. But homecoming is not a thing in the UK uh, for many reasons, but an American homecoming um, like week, game, parade, there's lots to it, is basically a, a week um, towards the beginning of the school year and it's called homecoming week. And throughout the week you have like different days where you dress up as different things or maybe it's like Decades Day or Twins Day. So it's kind of like this like spirit week. Yes, in an American high school. Um, typically, there's some sort of like homecoming parade that the high school kids put on through the local community. Yes, people do come out to watch. Um, and it finishes with the Friday night football game, which is the homecoming game. Um, typically you're hoping to play somebody that you're going to beat because it's embarrassing to lose your homecoming game, but it's sort of just like a kickoff to the school year. Everybody has come back to school. Um, and yeah, that is what homecoming, there's also homecoming king and queen, I think. There's definitely prom king and prom queen, but I'm pretty sure there's homecoming king and homecoming queen. And those are popularity contests voted on by the students and they get crowned 
at the homecoming football game at um, the end of the week on the Friday night. This is all legitimate. This is not this. It's 100% true. Like I said, anything you've seen about American high school on TV, it's true. And we will go into that in another video. They do not have the concept of homecoming in the UK. There's the difference. Americans do and Brits don't. Okay, the next difference I wrote down are people aren't willing to drive as far in the UK as they are in America on a single day or to a single event, I feel like. In the US, you drive like eight hours just to get out of Florida. Um, I was gonna make a joke about getting out of Florida there, but we won't. So yes, um, I feel like Americans are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go see my buddy Dave today. He's like a two hour drive away and they're like, no big deal day trip, morning trip, half day trip, two hours, whatever. Um, yeah, here in the UK, going two hours is like, I need to be going on like a week long holiday in the UK to drive uh, two hours in a single day. So if you have seen American programs or have talked to Americans or have been to America, um, my British viewers may be surprised at how willing we are to drive quite far uh, in a single day and just consider it normal. The next thing I put on my list, is literally the word netball with a question mark. Um, I did look up netball before this video to act somewhat educated on the matter. It appears to be a weird version of basketball that girls play in school. And specifically Wikipedia tells me um, that it's mostly played in Commonwealth nations. So British people might be like, yeah, netball, I love netball, or I played netball in school, or my kids play netball. Americans, no idea what netball is. Never heard of it. Definitely do not play it in school. Never seen it. Don't know the rules. Um, so netball is something that is popular in the UK, again, as a sort of a school time game, it appears. You guys can correct me on that if Wikipedia was wrong. Um, in America, we do not play netball in schools. The next thing on my list is the concept of giving a tour of your house to your friends. So. In the US, if you show up to your friend's house or maybe like a dinner party, it's not entirely uncommon in most parts of the US to give like a brief tour of your home and not just to like point out where the bathroom is, but to be like, welcome to my home. I assume that you would love to see my living room and my dining room and my kitchen. And like, you wouldn't necessarily take them into the bedrooms, but like you could, it wouldn't be so, it wouldn't be that weird. Um, we just, like, you have a guest over and for some reason think they want to see your house, which they probably do because they're nosy. Um, here in the UK, you don't give a tour of your house to people that come over. Not really. Really, not really. Um, I'm not saying people haven't done it, but it's not like a cultural thing where you go over to someone's house and you ask to, like, get a tour as if you're shopping for a new house. This could be down to many different reasons, um, cultural differences in being more private versus being more open, the sheer size of houses. You don't have to take a tour of my house because you walk in and it's basically right there. There's no tour to take. Um, but in general, giving a tour of your home, not really so much a thing in the UK. The next thing on my list that I promised I would talk about is baloney. Yes, bologna the meat. Um, in America, we have this, which is a sandwich meat called bologna. Now, I've lived in the UK for almost 11 years now. I've never been offered a bologna sandwich. I've never heard anyone say the word bologna, referring to any meat that you're about to eat. And so when doing this video, again, I wrote bologna, question mark, and did a little bit of research. So, American bologna, which I definitely stopped eating after the age of like nine once I realized it, what it potentially was. But essentially, again, according to a Cured Meats website, um, American bologna can be a mixture of pork, turkey, chicken, and beef in one slice of a uh, sandwich deli meat. But yeah, we ate bologna sandwiches all the time growing up, particularly at my grandparents' house. In the UK, American bologna, 
I've I've never seen in the store. However, there is like a close relative, uh, which apparently is called, and correct me if I pronounce this wrong, uh, mortadella. So this is like an actual version of um, this cooked, cured pork meat, 100% pork, uh, from Italy. Apparently, these days it has no relation to American bologna. Um, it is its own thing. And that is typically what you might find like on a charcuterie board in the UK. Um, so maybe my British audience may have heard of mortadella. It sounds fancy. I'd never heard of it because like I said, I'm American and I ate bologna, uh, which they do not really eat in the UK. Now, next we have a few rapid fire differences of what things are called based on brand names in each country. So um, number one is Hoover versus vacuum. Uh, or vacuum cleaner. Brits typically will refer to it as hoovering or get the hoover out. Hoover is a brand name of a vacuum cleaner. In the, U in the US, hoover is not a known brand name and we call them, uh, I mean, we mostly call it vacuuming or the vacuum cleaner. We do have our own brands of vacuum cleaners, but typically most people will just call it the vacuum cleaner as opposed to a hoover. The next one, which I think more people do know, is Band-Aid versus Plaster. So uh, each, if you're American, you'll know what I mean by Band-Aid, and if you're a Brit, you'll know what I mean by Plaster. A Band-Aid is an American brand of plasters. In the UK, they don't have Band-Aid. They don't call it Band-Aid. They call it uh, just a simple plaster as kind of a more generic name. And I definitely ran into uh, communication issues with this one time when I was in America and actually talking to a British person before I moved here who was asking for a plaster. And plaster in the US is this stuff that you like mold your hands into as part of like a school project. And so we had no idea, no idea what he meant. We had no idea why this man wanted plaster. We're like, to, to make a molding of your hand? What? And he's like, no, I'm bleeding. And we're like, well, you shouldn't make a molding of your hand while you're bleeding, sir. He wanted a Band-Aid, we found out eventually. Another one which is new to me is the crock pot versus the slow cooker. In the UK, slow cooker, I mean, you know what it is by the name? It's this pot that cooks things slowly over the course of a day. Um, we have slow cookers, slow cookers in the US and uh, the brand name is crock pot. So most people, even if it's not a branded crock pot, will call a slow cooker a crock pot. Now, the last thing on my list has to do um, with the medical system and particularly the idea of pediatricians. So a pediatrician, a pediatric doctor is for kids. They specialize in uh, babies and kids and their medical needs. So because of the different medical systems in each country, this works a little bit differently. The UK has pediatric specialists, it has pediatricians, but the GP or the, the family doctor, as we would call it in the US, is always going to be the gateway to that person. They're going to have to um, go ahead and refer you and your child to the pediatric specialist if they feel that it's necessary and they can't deal with the child's problem, but you always go through the GP as the first port of call in the UK. In the US, because it is a different medical system, um, a, a child typically will have a dedicated pediatrician as their main go-to doctor for the duration of their childhood. So you don't necessarily sign them up for your regular family doctor. You would specifically have separate doctors for you and your children um, because the kids go to the pediatricians. And the difference is, of course, similar if you go to a waiting room in a pediatric specialist unit in the UK, you go to the pediatrician and the waiting room is kid friendly. There's tons of games. There was like a climbing structure in my pediatrician's waiting room for kids to like fall off and break their arm before they go and see them. Um, it's just 
you take them straight to the kid-friendly atmosphere, whereas in the UK, you would take them just to the regular GP with everybody else, and then potentially, if you needed to be referred on to a pediatric specialist, would do that. So that brings me to the end of today's video. Comment below on which one you found the most interesting or surprising. Um, I love to know what people don't know or differences that you had heard before, so let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.